But I think as consumers, we are actually programmed to accept a price increase. We may not be happy about it, but we accept it. You're listening to episode 159 of the Fitness Business Podcast. We'd like to thank our foundation partner, Active Management. Since 2004, they've helped people like you make more sales, shape better leaders, reduce ownership stress, and this year, they help you think and do different. To find out more, go to www.activemgmt.com.au. Welcome along and thank you for joining me for this week's show. I was chatting to some club owners towards the end of 2017 and a number of them were stuck on a really common problem. The question that they had was this, should they implement a rate increase in their business? And if so, what's the best way to introduce it? It's a subject that I know can cause people a lot of angst, but it honestly doesn't have to. And today, our special guest, Justin Tamzett, is taking us through some proven strategies that you can use in your business. Most of you know JT has been a regular guest over the years, but just in case you're new to the show, let me quickly introduce you. JT completed his personal training course in 1988, which means in 2018, he celebrates working 30 years in the fitness industry. As of today, he's spoken in 19 countries, delivering 316 presentations, speeches, or keynotes to over 180,000 people, including speaking at Filex in Australia for 19 consecutive years and at Ursa for 13 consecutive years. He is Australia's most awarded industry speaker. It's my pleasure to introduce you to JT and let's transition to this week's show. JT, welcome back. It's been far too long since we've heard from you. Hey, I was only on last week for the pre-core quick fly five. What are you talking about? Well, that was kind of a preview. This is the this is the main game this time. Yeah, well, you have so many rock star guests now. It's unusual that I get a call up. So, ah, well, I I wanted to get you on this week because this is a topic that I think is going to be very very popular with a lot of our listeners, and I know that it's a topic that you know inside out. I think it's fair to say that uh, it's a challenge that pretty much every single business owner has at one point or another. And the challenge is this, do you increase your prices in your fitness business? What do you think? Well, uh, it's a pretty good question. I think it depends. You think it depends? Okay. So what does it depend on? Well, I think it really comes back to the philosophies of the owner and what they believe and there are, you know, there are really two schools of thought around price rises. Mm-hmm. Firstly, you should increase your prices every single year, same time, same amount or close to the same amount every year. Mm-hmm. The other school of thought is you reward customer loyalty and you never increase the prices on your current customers. You only increase the prices on new customers. And the route that you want to head with either of those schools of thought is really up to you as a business owner. Uh, I guess the main thing is that whatever you decide, you pretty much then stick with that through the lifetime of your business. Okay, let's dive into that in a little bit more detail. Let's let's explore both of those uh, schools of thought that you mentioned so that all of our listeners can make the right decision for their business. Yeah, well, I think there's, um, there's pros and cons for both. You know, absolutely, um, some businesses it works, some businesses doesn't for one school of thought and some businesses and some businesses don't for the other. So my thought though, and I'm going to, I guess, be a bit opinionated through the show today, but every business has increased expenses every single year. And at the most basic level, if you're a bricks and mortar business, you're going to see your rent increase. So I guess the question becomes, how do you maintain the same profitability year on year when your rent increases at a bare minimum? So I think as you probably said in your introduction, the only way to maintain close to the same profitability is to sell more memberships or more PT packages or more widgets or whatever you may want and spread that rent increase out over multiple people or 
platforms or, or whatever it may be. But the reality, though, is you are still going to be making less profit because your expenses have gone up. Additionally, for many of us, everything we purchase in our life as a consumer increases annually. You know, that could be the milk, it could be petrol or gas, it could be books that we want to buy. Generally, everything increases. And so why wouldn't gym memberships, why wouldn't personal training increase? So I think as consumers, we are actually programmed to accept a price increase. We may not be happy about it, but we accept it. I know uh, on the road that I travel a lot, particularly to the airport and around here, the tollways, they go up, I think the tolls go up every four months. We don't have any say in it. And it's kind of really, but you want to use it, you've just got to pay for it. Now, I also get totally, totally get the idea of rewarding loyalty. I think this is really important. Let me give you an example of a club around pricing that does this. And I know this club is celebrating 40 years in operation this year in 2018. And the owner of that facility has members from 40 years ago still paying exactly what they paid on day one of their membership some 40 years ago. So that's, um, I mean, that's pretty damn amazing in itself that someone's been around that long. But the people that are joining now are probably paying five, six, seven, eight times as much as that initial member. But that initial member isn't going to go anywhere because of the loyalty factor. Okay. So what then about clubs or studios, if they want to increase their fees, how do they do it? Yeah. Okay. So for me, what makes the most sense is that if you're going to increase your fees on an annual basis or your prices on an annual basis, that you do it at the same time every year. And generally, I recommend with clients that we work with that you increase at the same amount or maybe less each year. Okay. I I get the same amount, but explain to us less. Why would we increase it by less? Well, let's talk it through first, Chantel. And and again, this is just my opinion. And that is when someone starts or joins with your business, they should be told your your price rise policy from the start. So I have it in the conditions of membership or the conditions of service that you might say something like on the 1st of February, annually the membership dues will increase 3% or less automatically. So from the minute that they join your facility, they know and they can expect the fees to go up on an annual basis. You're being completely transparent from the start. Now, I believe this means that you don't have to really go back and tell the members every year that the fees are going up because they were told when they joined. Um, You may want to communicate that message. That's your choice. Now, the reason why I say less is that if you choose to increase the fees only, say, 2.5% or 2.25% instead of that full 3%, then that's okay and that's a positive story to tell your members you kind of exceeded their expectations. They're expecting 3% but you're only putting up 2% or 2.5%. So you, you can you can get a little win there instead of the full price rise, it's a reduced price rise. Okay, understand now. So basically you have an annual price increase but you must tell members um, when that's going to be and how much it's going to be. Well, I think if you tell the members when it is, Mm -hmm. that also starts to hold you more accountable as a business owner. And, And I guess the problem is for me is that when you don't increase your fees on this annual basis, like you forget to or whatever your policy, you may not even have a policy around increasing your fees, but if you don't increase it on an annual basis, you kind of back yourself into a pretty ugly corner. And and what I mean by that is if the increases are only 3%, then it may well equate to, I don't know, um, $2 a week or, or something like that. And that's far more palatable than having to go every three years and say, hey, I'm now increasing your fees $9 a week. The members are going to be more upset. You're going to get more pushback from that. So I actually think you save yourself a lot of heartbreak and energy by increasing on an annual basis rather than that substantially more on a longer period. Okay, JT, so what if the price increase that we want to implement is not in our current terms and conditions? 
Yeah, and, and I think this becomes a challenge for a lot of businesses because all of a sudden now, as we talk, the expenses have gone up and now they want to play with their pricing. So they haven't built it into the conditions. They haven't even really thought about it until now because they're now making less money. So I think if I was starting a business or running a business now, I would simply draw a line in the sand and that's, uh, and communicate by a letter or by email or both to all the, all the clients that on the 1st of February, the 1st of September, whatever date it may be, that there will be a 3% increase, 2% increase, whatever increase at that point. And I would probably want to give all the members six months' notice, around six months' notice, stating that the new 2018 or 2019 or whatever year you decide to do this, um, the new pricing policy is something like there will be a price increase on February the 1st every year. And look, there's going to be some short-term pain when you communicate that message initially, but there'll be long-term pleasure for you. JT, in your experience, is there a particular time of year that is best to do this price increase? Oh, look, I don't think there is. I don't really know, but I don't think there is. My, my personal preference is always around about 1st of February or maybe pushing it back to the 1st of March. Most prices go up on an annual basis and that might be timed around financial year or calendar year. I might consider a price increase on the 1st of October because we've just come out of a heavy month of usage. So I guess it's really up to the business and when the business wants to do it. They're just some dates that I, I, I feel comfortable with. But I don't honestly, I don't think it matters too much. I think what matters most is that you do consistently increase those fees if that's what you is going to be part of your business philosophy and that you don't forget to increase them if you tell people you're going to. Do you, um, do you find that many people forget? Yeah, actually, yes, I do. I find <laughs> a lot forget. Even if it's not in their conditions, they still forget. And even if it is in their conditions, they still forget. You know, as owners, they tend to focus a lot on sales and they forget about the money that's already, I guess, in their business. So we, we often forget about putting up the prices or we put it in the too hard basket. It's a lot easier to focus on new sales than it is putting up the prices and having an awkward conversation with our current members. So before we know it, the planned price increase date passes and we think, yep, too late now, I'll just have to wait till next year. So, you know, when... When I was growing up in the industry, I was at Ursa and I heard Victor Brick, the owner of Brick Bodies at the time back in the 1990s, he said this, the only person that's worried about a price increase is the owner. And I think he's right. I don't care whether you're a, a, a big fitness business box, small fitness studio or a PT business that's working out in a park, generally the person that worries most about putting up their price is the owner. When we make a big deal of the change in price, then our members will. Make it part of the culture of the business and it's no big deal. I guess that just reiterates the importance of having systems in place in your business so that once you've decided on the date and the, the amount that you're going to do that annual rate increase, that it just automatically happens. Yeah, that's spot on. That's exactly right. Okay. Okay. So this is a bit of a, a tough question, but can you tell us how much should we be increasing our rates? Yeah, you're right. That is a much tougher question. And I think it varies considerably based on uh, your competition. I think it varies based on the goals of your business that you're trying to achieve in the year. But again, I, I'm going to come back to what Victor said in the 1990s at his first presentation. He said, if you put up your prices or your fees and no one cancels, you probably haven't put them up enough. In fact, I remember having a PT that worked for me who put up her sessions by a whopping $1.50. And one of her clients, I remember having this conversation, saying to her, is that all? Is that enough for you to stay in business? And, and they're probably right, at $1.50, is it? I mean, how much is a cup of coffee these days? You're a coffee drinker. Yeah, about $4.50. Right, so for a third of a cup of coffee, it, it, it almost is illogical. It's almost insulting to only increase at $1.50. But this is a classic example, I think, that if a business owner is more worried about the price change 
then the consumer is worried. So in, in reality, if your members or your clients are actually getting results or getting value, then a price generally, which is less than a cup of coffee, is going to be insignificant to your consumer or your member or your prospect. Like, I've got to be honest, though, I prefer a percentage rather than a dollar amount. So you could say you're going to go up CPI or consumer price index. Um, I, I just prefer, I prefer a percentage, but I don't think it matters what you use or how much the increase is. I'm coming back to it just, I just think it's important that you do it consistently and that you can rely on that coming into your business for your budget every single year. And just to confirm, JT, we are talking about only once a year, right? We're not talking about doing this any, any more frequently than annually. No, I, like I wouldn't do it any more than annually. There, yeah. there are some clubs I know that, that maybe do or PT businesses that do, but I wouldn't, I think, annually suffice. I'm going to assume that there are probably some of our FBP family out there that haven't increased their, pre, their prices in a very long time. So do you have any advice for those people? Yeah, look, I've actually got a couple of clients who have been threatening to put up their price for three or four years now. I've also got one client that's never changed their price in five years and her rent goes up on market value. So I'm like, you're doing what? So, yeah, you don't have to assume, Chantel. It is happening. There are fitness businesses all over this planet that are not putting up their prices and are absorbing the increased expenses into their cash flow and their budgets um, and relying solely on making more sales. So I do think you need a strategy, though, around your pricing. Um, And we all operate in this competitive environment. Some would even say a hyper-competitive environment. So I recommend probably three steps that I would go through. Now, the first one is I think you need to test the market. So I always suggest that you increase the fees on new members first or new clients first. And I would be looking at doing that around four to six months before you plan on changing your current members' rates. This will allow you to see what the market is willing to pay. So if, you, if you're going to charge $7.50, just, and please, anyone listening, I don't want you to increase your fee $7.50. This is an arbitrary figure I've just come up with as an example. Does that sound like a fair deal? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> okay. So if you're going to charge an extra seven fifty a week and you see no dip in your sales, then you might play with taking it up to 10 and then you see a dip. So you know you kind of got this sweet spot around that seven fifty mark. But if you're at that seven fifty mark, conversely, you do see a dip in sales, then you might drop that increase back to, I don't know, $6.50, $6, $5.50, even $5. And you just try to find where there's no dip in your sales. So then you find the sweet spot for what the market is prepared to pay four to six months out from before you're making any changes to your current members. So step number two would be I would give all my members three months notice, 90 days notice, that we're going to change their prices. I think, again, that's a, that's a fairly good notice period. Um, I would email them and I would send a letter to them. And this means you now have three months of successfully selling your new rate, whether that be that $7.50, $5 or even $10. And you can always say in your letter, We have increased the fees on your members three months ago, giving you a six-month hiatus in the change in price as our way of saying thank you for being a member. So you've tested the market. You're now letting the members, you're giving them ample notice that you're making a change to your pricing. And I would then, my third step is I would give all members an opportunity to lock in at their current rate for an additional 12, 18 or 24 months, whatever period you want, with the understanding that this is a contracted period, they wish to cancel, there'll be a cancellation fee or whatever it may be, and at the end of that period that their fees will then raise, increase to the current level. So we're kind of giving them an out 
to stay at that same point. But for us, it's great because we're then guaranteed that income for 12, 18, 24 months. I really, yeah, yeah. I really like that overall strategy and in particular that point three that you just made because, it, as, as you say, it gives you that guaranteed longevity with the relationship with your customer because you've really extended that contract period as, as you've talked about. So thank you so much for running us through those three points. Before we That's finish... Okay. Just, sorry for interrupting. Mm-hmm. If you're a personal trainer and you're increasing your fees and you're doing that point three, mm-hmm. I would limit the number of sessions that they can buy. Mm-hmm. So we don't want them buying 100 sessions that's going to take them into 2021 because they're only training once every fortnight. We might say you can buy a maximum of 20 sessions at your current rate. Or equally, could you just put a time limit on it so that, it, you know, you can buy X number of sessions, but it needs to be used within six months or by this date. Yeah. Same theory. Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. So what about when it comes to other services or other products within our facilities? Can we, how do we apply or can we apply rate increases to those? Well, absolutely. There's no reason why you can't. Mm. And when I had my club, everything on the 1st of February increased. We increased our personal training prices. We increased towel hire. We increased bottles of water. We increased massage. We increased tennis court. We increased anything else that we charged out for. And in Australia, again, this might vary from country to country, but in Australia, we see a drop-off of attendance over that December, January period. So most people forget how much they paid for a bottle of water at the beginning of December when they're then back at the beginning of February or mid-January. So there's no real big deal when they do return. Maybe in the US, you know, with a, a quieter period over the summer holidays, you look at changing your prices on the 1st of August or the 1st of September. But absolutely, everything should go up on an annual basis if this is going to be kind of your pricing policy. Now, we we would also do in my club a PT special in December. So this is where we told the members that the new prices were coming in on the 1st of February and they could buy, like I said before, X number of sessions. Uh, We didn't put a time limit on that, but they could buy X number of sessions. I think ours was a maximum of, of 20 at the current rate before they would have to pay the new rate. So, um, and this was available to current clients, but also prospective clients. So it gave us a nice little cash flow in December as well. But I should also say that when a client started with us in personal training, they were also told that PT would increase by 3% every year on the 1st of February. So we're pretty open and transparent with our members. Yeah, and I think we have to go back to what you mentioned earlier, which is it's about automatically building that into the culture of the business. So then it just becomes something that they expect and not something that they're surprised by when it happens each year. Yeah, totally. And interestingly enough, Chantal, um, I use exactly the same principle now in business today. My roundtable clients are told when they initially join that on the 1st of February, their fees increase by 3%. And this is the last discussion I'm I'm going to have on price changing with them. Excellent. Thank you so much for all of that advice today, JT. Now, you know you can't get away without giving us a little bit of fit inspiration. So have you got a couple of uh, tips to leave us with today? Yeah, I've got my three standard bits of fit inspiration for you, Um, although they're not standard for some fitness business owners. So we'll see how we go. So number one, ideally, when you start your business or as a current business owner, draw a line in the sand and say from 2018 onwards, this is our price increase policy, whether that is we're only increasing new members and current members are staying the same or everybody's going to go up. Whatever your policy is, draw a line in the sand and make it your policy. Number two, the only person worried about changing the price is you. If you're delivering value, then no one is going to complain about paying more. And number three, if you increase your fees and no one cancels, you haven't increased them enough. They are great pieces of fit inspiration. Thank you so much, JT. Now, before you run away today, tell us about active management. Is there any news or updates or uh, interesting stuff going on for 2018? Yeah, we've got some pretty cool things that are happening this year. We're, We're pretty excited because 
after being in this business as a consultant for 14 years, we kind of got an idea around what the sticking points are in fitness businesses. So I've nailed it down to 11. And every month this year, we are going to be having a business spotlight. So this means we're giving every club owner and fitness business owner and PT business owner around the world the opportunity to focus on one part of their business, which is a sticking point or a pain point, and we're going to have them focus on that for one month. If you're part of our Facebook uh, fan page, you'll see what that spotlight is and you'll be able to work and, and hopefully that'll motivate you to do something. If you're an active management member, then we're going to be supplying tips, we're going to be supplying hacks, we're going to be supplying little tiny plugs every single day to help you stay focused on that business spotlight. So we're pretty pumped up about that. We think that's going to help a bunch of fitness business owners from around the world. The second thing that we're rolling out uh, this year is also a what we're calling a fortnightly focus. Again, from all the experience that I've had dealing with individuals within fitness businesses is that it's really important that they are on top of their game. The business itself can be bubbling along nicely, but if individuals are not focused, if individuals are not having self-care and looking after themselves, then they're going to let the business down, whether they're the leader of the business or whether they're the cleaner that comes in when the business is closed. Everybody within our business has to be firing on all cylinders. So we've got a fortnightly focus which will come out and this is where we challenge every single person in the industry who's part of our community to have a real bloody-minded focus for two weeks to try to achieve a challenge. There's some pretty cool ones. So there's about 16 of them that we're going to roll out throughout the year and you get one week off between each of those challenges. So again, if you're a member, then we're going to give you some extra tips and hacks on the Facebook page so that our membership, we think we've really beefed that up this year so that there's, there's more community and more engagement and collaboration that we're going to be rolling out. So that's pretty cool. And if you know anything about active management, then you know that our theme for this year is think and do different. And our goal in our business is to think and do different. And we also are encouraging all our clients to think and do different. If we think and we do the same as the rest of the fitness industry, we only get as good as the rest of the fitness industry. So the information we're going to be sharing is going to be really focused on thinking and doing different. Is that a good enough summary? That is a sensational summary. And I've got to say, I particularly love the sound of that monthly focus because I know personally when you get so much information and we're, we're all learning constantly from different sources, I think the idea of focusing on one particular theme or one particular part of our business for an entire month makes so much sense and it gives you the headspace and the time to dedicate to actually make that part of the business stronger. So yeah, it's going to be a sensational idea. It's going to be pretty cool. I mean, like I say, we, we've identified sticking points and pain points in the business so this is really, uh, I guess, giving us laser focus for 30 days on one of those pain points so that we can solve that. Now, we, there's no way we can solve problems within 30 days, but I'll tell you what, we can take a fair chunk, a good bite out of it. Yep, love the sound of that. Well, JT, thank you once again for coming on. It was good to see you. As I said, it's, uh, it's been a long time between podcasts, so it's, uh, it's great to have you back on the show and thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Tribe, if you haven't explored a functional training space for your gym, then now is the time. With Queenex Functional Training by Precore, there is a unit to fit every space. Plus, education is included to ensure that training is delivered with confidence. You need to jump online and check this out right now. Go to precore.com forward slash fitness business podcast. Get ready for this week's bonus segment, your extra injection of information, education, and inspiration to strengthen your fitness business. In today's bonus segment, I chat to Bill Moore, the CEO of Fitness Australia. Hey, Bill, thank you so much for joining me today. You're more than welcome, Chantel. Thanks for having me. It is very, very exciting to catch up because we've got a very important event to talk about. So tell us all about Phylex 2018. Yes, it is going to be huge. Uh, we're, the excitement is starting to build now. We've got a whole bunch of things, of course, going on. A lot of preparation now, but now the rubber's hitting the road. So, yeah, we're really getting cranked up about it now. Of course, it's the biggest event of its type in the Southern Hemisphere. 
And for me, Philex, well, it's just, there's three things for Philex for me. First is the, the education piece, inevitably. Nine strands this year, business strength, mind, body, yoga, PT, group fitness, says uh, obviously all that, 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 that activity. Secondly, the business gathering, I think, is a really important part. We've got a big focus on business this year. Fitness Australia, as well as being a registering body, we're very focused on business. We want to make sure this is a great opportunity for business to come together. So we brought to, to the event four major names in, the, in, in business. Thomas Plummer, gosh, 30 years experience, six books, arguably the most influential fitness commentator out there, probably the most controversial. Um, Amanda Stevens, brilliant marketing thought leader and custom experience uh, expert. Todd Durkin, uh, internationally recognised strength and conditioning coach all the way across the world, and of course with the NFL there in the USA. And Emma Barry, I've got a soft spot for Emma Barry. I've known Emma for years. She's hilarious. You must go and you must go and hear what she has to say. She calls herself an observer and catalyst. I think that's a pretty good description. But of course, huge uh, background, uh, founding member of Les Mills, uh, director of group fitness and programming for Equinox. You know, well. That would be fantastic to hear what she has to say. We've got a we pumped up the women's of influence, women of influence lunch, uh, which we've got a great panel there of women that are really going to bring some creative thinking to the event. And of course, it's a big social event too. You know, it's a great opportunity for everyone to come together. And for me, it's always great to be wandering around five minutes. G'day, g'day, I've seen you for ages. You never come away from there without having either made some new friends or seen some friends from way back. So, yeah, very, very easy. Or the other thing, too, I must say, the keynote address, 9.30 on Friday, not to be missed. Michael Crossland, who's an interesting, fascinating guy, also from a book called Kids Don't Get Cancer. We were very lucky to get him. He's in high demand, but incredibly inspirational. And I would, I would suggest that that wouldn't be a session you want to miss. So, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff going on. There, it's going to be a huge year this year, and I have to agree with you. I always find that sessions absolutely are so valuable to go go and attend, but the benefit you get from the networking at an event like Filex is it's invaluable. You know, and the people that you meet and the things that you learn along the way are fantastic. And I think you mentioned up front there the business summit and the lineup that you have this year really is so so strong and so diverse. You know, I just, I was just saying to you, I just came off interviewing Thomas this morning and he did a piece for the podcast, which was all around social media. Mm -hmm. And, you know, over that four days, he was telling us that he's got a whole lot of sessions. There's a business summit, but then there's a session every single day with a really strong business focus from Thomas. And, and as you said, with Amanda and with Todd and with, um, with Emma, it's going to be such a fantastic day to, to kick things off on the Thursday. Now, Bill, really importantly, what date is Filex this year? Well, it runs from the 19th to the 22nd of April. The 19th is the, that is the pre-conventional workshops and importantly, the business summit. Um, and then the actual education start go from the 20th to the 22nd. So they go for the Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So talk us through who is Filex for? Who should be attending the conference? Well, certainly fitness business owners, I don't think you, you could afford to miss it, really. There's, apart from the wealth of information that is always going to be part and parcel of the, um, of the education sessions, as you put it, uh, so succinctly, Chantel, you cannot get a better networking event than this because you've got all the major suppliers and everybody at the trade show that are going to be around about the place. But, of course, at the actual Pilex event itself, all the major people within the industry, and not just the, the, the big players in the industry, but the startups, the boutiques, the up and coming. You know, there's a whole really a really good breadth, I think, of people that will be attending this year. So first, firstly, the fitness business owners, but also say exercise professionals. I mean, there's 12 CCs that go with it for a start. Really important to get across. Just to get that education piece bubbling along to keep the professionalism that we that we work so hard to build into our industry, this is what maintains it. And for me, that's a really critical piece. But I, I talk to a lot of people that train a lot and, they, and they're interested in coming. And I think it's great that we can actually bring, bring people that maybe want to have a career in the fitness industry, but maybe are just interested in, in some of those topics topic because they'll come away with a lot as well. So, yeah, there's a little bit of something for everybody there. Absolutely. Okay, so really importantly, how does everyone go about booking their ticket to Filex 2018? 
very important. So just jump onto filex.com.au. Um, if you can download the program, check out the sessions that you want to do to make sure that you can secure a spot. If you get your Fitness Australia membership ready because you will get a discount in the order of $100 plus as an FA member, and away you go, and we'll see you there. Okay, so make sure you check it out, guys. That is filex.com.au to book your tickets. And as Bill said, if you're a Fitness Australia member, then you can get that discount as well. So, Bill, thank you so much for joining us today to chat all about Filex 2018. You're more than welcome. Thanks for having me, Chantel. Pre-Core Quick Fire 5. This week's Pre-Core Quick Fire 5 guest is Peter Docker. Peter, welcome along to the show. It's an absolute privilege to have you join us. It's a pleasure to be here, Chantal. Now, we start each of our shows with what we call the pre-core quick fire five questions. And it's just a bit of a way for our listeners to get to know you before we dive into the main interview. So are you ready for your pre-core quick fire five? Go for it. Tell everyone, why do you do what you do? (laughs) <laughs> my favorite question <laughs> the reason I do what I do I get out of bed every day inspired by the possibility of enabling people to be extraordinary so that they can do extraordinary things and what's one ritual that helps you become better at what you do what helps me to do things better love mm-hmm. so let me explain when I stand up in front of perhaps a large audience and maybe the setup hasn't been perfect or I've been rattled or whatever And to help me serve the people in front of me, I just extend love. I, in my mind, I visualize wrapping my arms around everybody. And then it just seems to go really well. That's amazing. And tell us, are there any apps or systems that you actually use to stay in control of what I know is a very busy workload? (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, it's debatable whether I... (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I said a flight planner, maybe. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that'd be handy. But um, <laughs> I don't know whether I'm always in control, but I do like to try and keep things simple. And so uh, apps such as Dropbox and the like, which help me to keep everything coordinated and synchronized, I think life would be a lot more difficult without those apps. Oh, yeah, I could just imagine. And can you share with everyone, because we, we caught up briefly just before starting this interview, and you were telling me just how much travel you have done in the past five weeks. Trying to share that with everyone? <laughs> well, I, I calculate it in terms of time zones and flying hours. So I've crossed 57 time zones, and I've been inside aircraft for 93 hours, which, um, yeah, feels like quite a long time to me. Yeah, that is that is quite extraordinary. So, uh, <laughs> managing the workload is very important. So Indeed. now um, you're allowed to say your own book now because what's one book, podcast or blog that you would recommend to everyone and why? Okay, well, I wasn't going to mention my own book, actually. Uh, we can talk about that later. The book that immediately comes to mind is that of my dear friend and colleague, Kristen Hadid. Kristen Hadid has written a book called Permission to Screw Up. And it's a fantastic millennial's perspective on starting a business, making all the mistakes that one makes starting a business and just being very vulnerable and sharing that with, uh, with everybody who cares to read a book. And it's a fantastic how to hands on, no holds barred, learning by your mistakes leadership manual is wonderful. Oh, I love the sound of that. I'm going to go and check that out and uh, and make sure that we add a link to today's show notes. Now, give everyone a little bit of insight about what we're going to be talking about in the main interview when we catch up. Okay. Well, I think we'll talk about starting with why, W-H-Y, your why being your high purpose, your cause, your belief, and how that underpins the success of people, leaders, and great businesses. Well, Peter, I've got to tell you, I am so, so thrilled that you're coming on the show and I cannot wait to catch up with you for the main interview next week. Before we finish off today's show, a reminder that all the resources, the links and a transcript for today's show can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. A huge thank you to all of our partners for their support and to our foundation partner, Active Management. You can go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active for a free business development ebook. Thank you for joining me for another week of the show. I'll see you next week. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others.